if I could tell you a quick, uh, funny Jake story before we go in the mid south, absolutely. Because you, know, you know, back in the day, we used to rib each other all the time, and and he ribbed me pretty good at my first TV, which we'll cover early later when we go in the mid south. And I went up to TV. You know, I'm at the TV WWF, and I was on the first hour, and there's two more hours, and Jake's like, "Well, let's go." And I'm like, "Well, I I can't leave. There's two more." I go, "Come on, let's go. Come on, get in the car." So we get in the car and we drive down. We're probably been an hour outside of town. Jake looks over at me and goes, man, I can't believe you left TV on your first day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, brother, what have you done to me, you know? So to get him back, we're in Chicago and we're getting ready to leave. And we were, we were tag team and we're getting ready to leave. And we opened it. There's this bank of doors. And we opened the doors and there's still like 200 people out there. They're all rabid. <laughs> And you can see the limo on the far side of the people, you know? Yeah. So we pull the doors back closed, and Jake's looking at it and goes, you know, what are we going to do, hacker? And I'm like, i tell you what, brother. One, two, three, we'll open the door. We'll push our way through the door. I'll fight. We'll fight through the crowd. I'll meet you at the limo. Well, I'm with you, brother. I said, okay, Jake. One, two, three, we open the door. Jake goes out. I pulled the door closed behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a three count. I snuck out the other door. I'm sitting in the limo waiting for him. All right, let's turn to the newsletter for some notes here. Uh, this is from the January 12th, 1987 edition. Uh, the biggest news story and really the two biggest news stories of the past week come from out of the UWF. Both Jim Duggan and the Fantastics have been released from their current contracts effective at the end of this month. Since Duggan was the most popular wrestler in the UWF, this is a major development. Uh, and Duggan will now get a chance to join Titan Sports as he's wanted to for the past three months. So uh, Dave also notes that he's not especially optimistic that Duggan is going to get over, as as he put it, because no newcomer has gotten over since Jake Roberts came into the company the previous year. So obviously that didn't quite work out. He's got to put his foot in his mouth there because Jim was a huge success. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know that Jim and yourself are close. Were you yeah. in close contact with him during this yes. your early time in the WWF? Absolutely, man. I've Jim, as soon as he got there, we were hooked up by the hips, man. You know, I showed him around, had a lot of fun with him. I know his his first television that he did, you know, they ran three hours, three hour shows. And uh, we were there and I'd been on the first hour, which was, well, it wasn't unusual, but usually I was on the second and third hours too. But this time I wasn't. So I went out and did my bit. And hell, I'm ready to go. It's not even it's not even 8:30 yet, and I'm getting out of the building, which that was just unheard of. Mm -hmm. So I turn around, and I see Doug, and I said, "What are you doing?" He goes, "I don't know. I'm just waiting. I guess." I'm like, "What do you mean waiting?" He said, "Well, <clears throat> I was on the first hour, but I'm not on the second hour or third hour." And I was like, "Well, hell, get your shit and let's go, man. Come on, we go to the strip bar, buddy." <laughs> So he went and grabbed his stuff, you know, and threw it in his bag. Didn't even get dressed, man. Just threw his shit in the bag and went out the door we went. Well, about 30 minutes down the road, I'm like, Hacksaw, you're too much, man. He goes, what do you mean, brother? I said, man, your first television and you walk out? <laughs> He's like, what? I said, no fucking way I'd have walked out on my first TV, brother. Jesus Christ, because they're always doing extra stuff. <laughs> and he's like, but you fucking said. I said, you listen to me? Oh, my God. That's another fright that gets you. How dare you listen to Jake the Stick Roberts, brother? <laughs> he's like, you're fucking asshole. I'll fucking kill you if something happens. Thank God nothing happened. Dude, amazing. And Jim, so Jim told that story. Uh, it would have been yesterday as we're recording this, yeah. but he also told the story of how he got you back. Uh, do you remember oh, what he did? Uh, yeah, prick. <laughs> yeah, we were in Boston or someplace and they had these doors. That, uh, is that the one? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, prick. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we got ready to leave the building and we look outside and there's about 500 fucking people out there, man. And they're all chanting for us. And so we look at it and we're like, God damn, there's our car over there, but we got to get through all those damn people first. How the hell are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. So Jim's, I got it, I got it, I got it. I said, what? He goes, you go down to that end and I'll go down to this end, which is like 10 doors. 
Mm-hmm. On the count of three, we'll both go. That'll confuse them, and they'll get caught up in the clusterfuck. We'll make it. She's fucking right. Yeah, sounds about as good as anything I got. So we both get in position. One, two, three. And man, I busted out that door. Now you got to remember, I've got my luggage and the snake. <laughs> and I'm fighting through these fucking people, man. And they're just, oh, they've got me, man. I, I'm stopped. And once you stop, you're dead. Because mm-hmm. then they surround you. And I'm dead, man. I, I look up. And Hacksaw is still inside. That <laughs> motherfucker. He waited for everybody to come to me, and then he just popped out the door and shoo, right straight to the car. <laughs> that asshole. Just amazing. Simple but effective rib. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there were many more to come. <laughs> <laughs>